So Harry, you, I want you to talk to us about the Quisartinib. And you know, we had Serafinib for a while and then we have the Magistore and hopefully to get an approval soon. But I want to know from you about your studies using Quisartinib. Is it better, more potent? Uh, what are the state of the art today? So uh, Quisartinib, uh, also previously known as AC220, is another orally bioavailable FLT3 inhibitor. Um, what distinguishes um, it from mitostorin is it's a little bit more selective than mitostorin and serafinib for FLT3, although it still does have some other targets such as CKIT, which may be important in, in some of the toxicities. The thing that distinguishes it from other um, next generation FLT3 inhibitors such as crinolinib and uh, uh, gilteritinib, uh, ASP2215, is that it does not um, inhibit FLT3 enzyme with a tyrosine kinase domain mutation, which may be an important feature since uh, patients who were treated in the phase one and expansion studies of, um, of uh, quizartinib um, when they develop resistance, often some, well, some of these patients had tyrosine kinase domain mutations. Um, but it, it makes sense to, um, based on the preclinical and the phase one uh, data showing activity of quizartinib with about 50% response rates um, to um, bring it forward into initial therapy. And so the quantum first uh, trial is an international uh, trial uh, that is very similar in design to the RATIFY trial, um, CLGB uh, 10403. 603. 603, right, sorry. And um, so it's a um, study for patients up to the age of 75, an international study. There are going to be 536 patients that are treated on the study at about 250 centers. And patients um, will be randomly assigned one to one to receive standard induction chemotherapy. Um, high dose cytarabine, um, and then nothing or, you know, observation, or the same thing with uh, quizartinib for 14 days during induction, post high dose RSC, and then as a maintenance. So very similar. Uh, the primary endpoint of the study is going to be event-free survival. A nuance of the study, which I think is important, especially for this group of patients who tend to present with very proliferative disease, the ones that are truly driven by FLT3, is that patients um, can undergo screening for the FLT3 ITD centrally, and if they have it, get put on the study, but they can start the donorubicin or um, idorubicin initially and then get randomized and put on a drug at day eight. So that study ha has just started. We've enrolled uh, our first patient in it, um, but it has a long way to go. And uh, speaking then finally to this question of which anthracycline and which dose, the study allows the uh, treating physician to use donorubicin at 60 or idorubicin at 12. So moving forward in the future, you have all these drugs available. How you sequence them, which one you choose? Uh, quizartinib, serafinib, mitostorin. Well, let, let me just first start by saying that the field is changing very quickly. I think most of us at this table, in a way, expect that mitostorin will get a label in the very near future, at least in the United States. And quite frankly, the Quantum First study will need to be done as an international study because it may be very difficult to randomize patients in the near future in the United States to an arm that does not have a FLT3 inhibitor in it. Uh, so the playing field is going to change when mitostorin comes along and uh, these other drugs um, will need to be compared because finally we don't know why there was a benefit with mitostorin. I mean, we assume it's because it was inhibiting FLT3, but it also targets other tyrosine kinases, which may be actually very important in the benefit that we actually saw. So Richard, today we have all these tests done for the physician and the community. Shall we wait to get all these tests back before we decide on therapy? Uh, let's say you have somebody with AML, you check for the carry type, you rule out APL rapidly, but in order to design what is the best for the long term, you need to wait to get FLT3 level, or start chemotherapy and later on catch up and add. Well, we're, we're talking about a patient who's going to get uh, three and seven based induction chemotherapy, I think, right now, right? So in that scenario, at the moment, uh, you don't have to wait to treat the patient. And in fact, even when mitostorin becomes available, as Harry just said, since the drug isn't due to start based on the ratified trial until day eight, you can okay. certainly, okay. Uh, the only problem with that is you might uh, make the patient ineligible for other clinical trials should they be available. 
uh, with other, other agents. Nonetheless, but as a community doctor, you could certainly start the patient and wait for the results. So you should get them back within a week. Obviously, you'll need to know by that point in time. Okay. No, that's